Hi, this is a 2008 Road King Classic. Uh, we're going from the spoke wheels to nine spoke chrome wheels and white wall tires. And uh, I wanted to share some tips that I uh, picked up while balancing the rear tire particularly. Uh, that's it there. The bowl is not on it yet. And the whole purpose of this video is to show you how I went through uh, balancing the bowl, the sprocket, and then the entire assembly all together. A lot of the shops around here, uh, they can't put the the uh, sprocket in their uh, spin balancer, dynamic balancer. So uh, I wanted to check that sprocket, and uh, I have it in the on the static balance there. And I was surprised how, how heavy it is on uh, on one spot. Uh, you'd think the, the metallurgy would be about the same throughout that sprocket. Uh, it's identical all the way around. But um, it's, it, is, it does have a heavy spot. And so I marked that as you can see uh, on the bottom. And that's nearly uh, 14 grams out of balance. I uh, checked it earlier. There's the bowl. I did the same thing with the bowl. Uh, I tried it, uh, I, I balanced it with and without the rubber and uh, just to see if the rubber made any difference or if, if the rubber pieces were heavier and they're not. Uh, it's all the same. So uh, I found my, uh, my heavy spot on the bowl. Now that bowl is going to be torqued onto the rim uh, with those five bolts. But um, so this was this was a good opportunity to uh, to find the heavy spot on the uh, bowl. I also found the heavy spot on the rim uh, after putting my valve stem in. And by the way, the valve stem is never the heavy spot, uh, as far as I've noticed on rims. They they always uh, tell you to put the the light spot of the tire uh, at the uh, at the valve stem, but uh, they were rare. I've, I've never put a tire on that uh, that was the light spot of the rim, and that includes these two rims right here that I'm working with. So there's the sprocket with the bowl, and uh, what I did was uh, put the heavy spots opposite each other to uh, uh, you can see it imp it improved it. Uh, there's no uh, I'm not putting any weights there. The weights are going to be on the wheel, but it definitely did make a difference uh, by doing that. And uh, so uh, that'll eliminate some of the weights required to balance the overall assembly once the tire is installed. So you can see that that improved it quite a bit. Uh, not perfect, but it's pretty close to being balanced uh, compared to uh, the way it was. And if I would have uh, lined up both heavy spots on the bottom, I'd really it would really require a lot more weight when it comes to uh, balancing the overall assembly. So I've already found the heavy spot on the rim. It's right there by that chalk mark. And now I'm going to install the bowl with the heavy spot on the bowl 180 degrees opposite of that heavy spot on the rim. And that'll help eliminate some of the total weight of, of balancing the uh, entire assembly. So we'll go ahead and torque that down to 60 foot-pounds. Uh, the manual says 55 to 65, so uh, we're putting some red Loctite and we're going to torque it down uh, nice and snug. So, uh, because that's going to be there for quite a while, hopefully never have to take it off again. Also a good opportunity to check the, the bearing on the sprocket. One thing I did notice is that the two bearings on uh, the back wheel, both sides, are uh, pretty gritty, bad. Uh, so uh, I noticed that uh, when I got the bike, uh, the front 
bearings had been changed about 3,000 miles ago, but the rear bearings hadn't been changed. I'm surprised they bad already, but uh, okay, enough with that. So we've got the uh, rear rim uh, with the bowl torqued on now and uh, ready to uh, ready to install the sprocket on the balancer and check that out uh, and that bowl is installed with the uh, heavy spots opposite each other so here's the entire assembly in the balancer uh, one of the uh, things that uh, enabled me to balance everything together was the uh, the balancer uh, I kind of modified it and split it I don't think you can see it but uh, I split the base so that I could uh, vary the width of the uh, two arms on the balancer that way I was able to uh, I can set it up to whatever uh, size shaft I'm using that's actually the motorcycle shaft there I'm not using the balancer shaft and uh, this will be a more accurate way to uh, s sandwich all of that stuff in together uh, s where it can't flop around or anything uh, because the uh, the sprocket particularly sitting in the bowl with those rubber components inside uh, if it's not perfectly centered it, w it will not balance and I think that's one of the probably one of the reasons a lot of people don't want to deal with it uh, the tire shops and what have you so uh, I'm checking the balance there and uh, you can see that I've got a couple of weights up at the top just stuck on with some duct tape and um, it turns out that I've got about 10 grams total there uh, and it's in, in perfect balance with uh, one seven gram and a half of a seven gram so you call it around 10 grams so the only thing I need to do now is uh, when I get my tar installed I'm gonna have the yellow dot on the Dunlop, Dunlop installed right there I'm going to mark that that rim uh, and, and put some instructions on it for the tar guy to uh, install the light spot on the tar opposite those weights. So that will give me another opportunity to uh, offset the weights. It'll be the final opportunity, and we'll see how much weight we end up with when we get to that point. This is just a view from the other side. The sprocket is sitting over the bowl, so you can't really see it there. And that's the way it's going to be setting on the motorcycle with the uh, once we get the tire on it. Now I'm just making me a little mark for the tire guy. I'm just going to stick it on the rotor there so that he'll know which uh, where to put the light spot which on the Dunlop is a yellow spot and then we're off to the uh, to the tire changer